Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, the weekend rolls on, and so does spoiler season for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And some of these spoilers have me saying, yay! And some have me saying, no, wizards, what are you doing? Let's jump into it. So, first up, Annie joins up. Yeah, we've been getting kind of these legendary enchantments that... Tend to be decently powerful for legendary tribal decks, uh, but this one I think particularly is, I'm not going to say problematic, but I'm going to say wizards. I mean, a couple of months ago, we didn't have any of these type of effects, and now we have like three, and you're pushing it a bit too far. Goodness gracious. Here we go. A legendary enchantment for four mana in Naya. When it enters the battlefield, it does five damage to our creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls. If a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers, that ability triggers additional time. Okay. First off, stop. Please. That first part's fine, right? Five damage to a creature planeswalker and opponent controls. I don't know why they specified opponent controls. Like, couldn't they have just done, like, up to one creature or planeswalker? Uh, I guess they did. I mean, like, uh, brash taunter kind of things like that that uh, i don't know anyways that's not the point the point of this card is again doubling up the triggers of legendary creatures you control specifically your commander i mean like this is just literally like do you have a commander that has a triggered ability are you in naya colors you want this that's basically it it's like the same thing as like wandering Th throne basically right where it's like hey ha 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 do you have a commander that does that awesome it doubles that up that's powerful no, really. Now we have like three of these essentially, and wizards, what? Why? Why are we just getting all these at the same time? These are, I'm not gonna, I never say like, you know, guaranteed cards to be in there, like, it like, has to be stable. You have to have this card. But it's hard to argue against this kind of a card in any kind of a commander deck that can utilize that, again, that has a commander that has a valuable triggered ability. Most of the time, when you have a commander with a triggered ability, the entire deck is built around that. And by doubling it up, yeah, that's going to be powerful. So, Wizards knows they're making these chase cards, essentially. Every single time they do this, we've gotten them, you know, roaming from. I think that card, when Eddie and I reviewed it first or whatever, was like $17. And then, yeah, it's like $30 plus dollars now. And it's never going to stop just going up, 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 up until it's reprinted. Because, again, it has so many applications. Now, Wandering Throne itself, again, is colorless i mean it doesn't have a color i should say it's not colorless it doesn't have like colorless mana symbols in it but like it's generic you can utilize it in any deck out there essentially and yeah if you have a commander that has that or again have tribal creatures that have that essentially then there you go this one is more specific in that oh it's limited there you go it's limited naya but still like if you have a naya commander that has a triggered ability it is going to be really 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 difficult to ever without budget being a restriction saying i shouldn't utilize this card in a deck because first of all again enchantments are typically the hardest permanents to deal with i would say like because like i mean obviously the weakest out of every uh, one of the permanents that comes to being dealt with is creatures for the most part because like any kind of wrath that people use typically are like wrath of god takes out creatures all right it just happens to take out a creature that might just be like oh it's just they are just to like you know have this ability versus like oh it's a powerful creature doesn't matter they all get taken out artifacts a little more easy to get taken out i would say than enchantments enchantments are just like yeah they're not gonna get taken out nearly as easy planeswalkers can get attacked that kind of stuff too i guess battles do what you want your battle to be taken out regardless enchantments are probably the hardest the hardiest permanent okay this again just says, oh, I've got my commander, my triggered ability. I double up for free. I mean, once it's in play for free. Yay. Value, 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 value. All the doubling things too. Just wizards, please stop. Gosh, just every single thing now these days is double or triple something. And I'm not trying to say you can't be excited about this card. You can definitely be excited about this card. All right. And there's definitely going to be a lot of commanders are like, yes, I really want this. And, and again, I just, I just said specifically for, again, just commanders that have triggered abilities, yeah, if you've got a legendary tribal deck, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Just seeing how many of your cards have triggered abilities on them. And be like, oh, it triggers that, triggers that, triggers my commander, triggers that, triggers that. Yeah, legendary tribal decks, I've got to consider this one. I could see like an entire like Sisse weather like captain deck. Is weather like captain the one that like tutors them out? Being like built around this essentially and 
creatures that have ledger creatures that have triggered abilities so yeah this is pretty absurd okay but we're not done with why i'm i'm saying no yet okay like no this card and then obviously this other one gold vein hydra okay wizards Long gone are the days where IV Elemental was a thing. I understand that, right? Back when I was a kid, that was like one of my first like starter decks. It was like this the IV Elemental. Deck. It was just, like, on the cover, I think, of the deck. I don't think the deck was like built around or anything like that, but like it was like IV Elemental. Like it was like you know, an X in a green enters with X counters on or X counters on it, right? Plus one counters on it. It's a zero zero. Cool. That's what it used to be, and it was a rare. Now it's not. That's okay. These days though, we get zero zero Hydra for X in a green. Vigilance, Trample, Haste. Okay. Enders with X counters on it. Okay. That's probably the standard these days for what you're going to get for an X creature. Like, we, we did get, like, that one dragon, right, that was, like, flying in haste. Enders with X counters on it. That was, like, last year. We got that one, right? The exact same kind of thing. Oh, but wait. Here we go. When it dies, create a number of tap treasure tokens equal to its power. Wizards, you are clowns. You are clowns. What are you doing? You know that treasures are a problem right now in Commander. And you just keep chucking more treasure things into Commander. What are you doing? Oh, we fixed it, though. They come into play tapped. Yeah. Okay, it's better that you did it that way. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that you're starting to do that with certain ones. You're not even doing all of them. You're doing with certain ones, okay? I appreciate that. Regardless... We don't need this kind of a card. You just have already like, okay, yeah, I've got this big threat that's already going to fit in certain like big mana decks, essentially, right? Like Expel decks, those kind of things, Hydra Tribal decks. This already could have fit without that treasure thing on it at all, right? It could have fit in those decks, absolutely, and been a good threat. Vigilance Trimble Haste. Cool, I swing right away. It's basically like a fireball that can stay back for blocking to the Vigilance. And then you're like, oh, but that's not good enough. For us to get more money out of this set by having people have to go after this as a chase card because it's a mythic. We need to add something else. So it's basically just like, hey, green decks out there. Do you want a giant source of mana on top of your giant creature? Yay! Wizards, I'm tired of you with these kind of treasure things. And the doubling up things. I just... Oh, gosh. Some of the ones are just, like, very obvious. Like, hmm, what's going to sell the set? This. What's going to sell the set? This. Goodness gracious, wizards. Slow it down. I understand power creep's a thing, but, like, this is absurd. Again, if you look at this compared to that dragon lister, I can't remember the name. Please let me in the comments below. Can't remember the name, but it's like, yeah, the exact same card. Take out the flying, add the trample vigilance, and then you're like, but wait, that's not good enough. Add treasures. Please stop with the treasures. Goodness gracious, it's a problem. You made them too powerful in Commander. They're too abundant. They're already, I think, the second most powerful theme on EDH Rack. Goodness gracious, stop with the treasures. Okay, now let's move on to some better spoilers, in my opinion. Not better as in more powerful, but better as in much more balanced than the previous two cards that we talked about, and much less of a problem. Again, it's just my opinion. You're allowed to have your own opinion that they're not a problem. That's completely fine. A 3-3 Human Scout for 4 mana in Azorius, Gem Lightfoot, Sky Explorer, Flying Vigilance. Beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, draw a card. I mean, again, better spoiler in that it is um, not as problematic. <laughs> it's, I don't know how many decks are going to be built around this, obviously, because it's decently weak. I mean, if you have a, I guess, um, Azorius deck where you're just planning on playing your opponent's turns, cool, you get a free card draw on your turn. Is that worth it for a commander that costs 4 mana? Probably not. Next up. Metamorphic Blast, an instant for a single blue mana, plus though, so we have a spree card, choose one or more additional cost, an extra plus one, so on turn, target creature becomes a white rabbit, base power tough is zero one, or an extra three mana target player draws two cards, I mean, yeah, these tend to be a little over costed because they're flexibility, uh, what kind of decks are going to want to utilize these, I guess ones that really care about changing uh, creatures to have base power and toughness difference, uh, like if you have like little Tims in your deck, you can utilize that obviously, so it's like maybe an is it kind of like Pinger's deck, potentially could utilize this, other than that, yeah, it's kind of overcosted for a card draw spell in blue. Next up, return the favor. Yet another spree card. Instant for red, red plus. Choose one of cost. Plus one. Copy target instant. Sorry, sorry. Target instant spell. Sorcery spell. Active ability. Triggered ability. Choose targets to the copy. Another plus one. Change the target target spell. The ability to the single target. This one, I actually think, is costed pretty appropriately. I mean, typically when it comes to copying something, it's going to cost two. Uh, copying it's their sorcery, I should say. But 
being able to give you extra flexibility to copy a triggered ability or activated ability, that's nice as well. And that's basically worth that three, in my opinion. So, like, you know, red, red, and one. But also being able to change the target of a spell is really good, too. So, yeah, you can have some really big blowout plays with this, again, for four mana, where you're changing a target of a spell or ability and then actually copying it as well to get it twice so you do some pretty crazy things with this i can definitely see this seeing play in any kind of decks that already have these kind of like copying effects uh but yeah or redirection effects i should say too or yeah just my like my jota deck that's just like hey play a big spell and copy it a bunch of times yeah could utilize that card like this it's pretty interesting and then actually one that's very interesting to me and again finally goodness gracious i guess green has been getting a lot of card draw but like white has and in Selesnia commanders that like get card draw there's not really as few and far between a 4-2 human ranger with vigilance for three mana wily duke at and hero uh yeah this is pretty exciting for Selesnia commanders whenever it becomes tapped you gain one life draw a card i like that again you have this becomes tapped trigger for you and that you can apparently use and abuse now with all these like doubling up triggers ha 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 things but i mean luckily that new card's in naya so you can't utilize this with this commander um yeah, being able to build around that function in a lot of different ways is very exciting versus just this being, oh gosh, what's the one, um, carto not cartographer, what, it's in blue, it costs four mana, it can just tap for a, to draw a card, or tap to draw a card, I mean, uh, whatever that one is, let me know in the comments below, I don't know why I'm, 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 I'm missing that, regardless, um, yeah, this seems more Selesny, where it's like, okay, when this becomes tapped, you game will not draw a card, it seems to be in that like vein of like you need to build around that in some way but you have options on how to build around that how do you get this to be tapped because you can't even do it in combat which i think is just interesting and fun essentially with that where it's like it's vigilant you cannot tap this in combat if you're attacking you're like i attack oh i don't get a gain of life or draw a card so being able to say okay what ways can i utilize to actually tap this to make sure i am getting that advantage and getting again yeah the, the gain of life is it's nice i mean padding your life total is a nice thing is it the best part of the card? Absolutely not. The drawing the card is the best part of this card. But that being said, you can actually gain value. You can build other ways to gain value around that life gain too, which is very, very, very nice. And yeah, there's some interesting functionality with this kind of a commander that I do like. I like this kind of a design where like, okay, you're giving these colors something that they usually don't have. Again, the life gain they usually do, but the, the card advantage they usually don't. And saying here, go about this in a different way. So I do like that kind of design. Again, so with this set, we've definitely seen some, in my opinion, not bad designs, but designs that, uh, yeah, are a bit too, like, hey, chase card, chase card, chase card, chase card, chase card, that they pushed a bit too far just because they want you to buy the set. And then also some interesting designs that are, you know, commanders that are built in different directions that we haven't seen really before too much. So I do like that. I like that we're getting these kinds of cards. Wizards, please stop with the obnoxious chase cards. Uh, you're never going to do that, but please uh yeah let's talk about how to build around this commander though if you're excited about this one like i am someone talk about the budget buys the price of your picks all these cards can be seen in a card list link in the description below let's jump into it so first up again the budget buys the cards are less than one dollar even within my budget might be within yours as well glare of subdual this is the first one that came to my mind when i saw this commander this is a really cool and sometimes brutal card potentially but it's kind of like Opposition, but in Selesnya. Now, Opposition's a bit more brutal, but uh, this is very, very good. Enchantment for four mana in Selesnya. Tap and untap creature control, tap target artifact or creature. So, yeah, reducing other opponents' resources, like with like, like land destruction is not really all that nice in Commander, but like, hey, if I tap my creature to tap down your mana rock, that's fine, right? <laughs> Repeatedly uh so being able to do this again 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 with your commander or any of your other creatures can be very effective again obviously you can tap down creatures too so being able to tap your commander whenever you want again without a cost no cost needed with this to actually tap your commander you just do it whenever you want to tap down an opponent's artifact or creature as long as you have you know something to target i guess you could just technically target itself if you really need something to target right so that's fine uh but yes being able to Tap down your opponent's thing. So if they have a creature that's like, oh, I don't want that creature to block. Tap it down. Cool. Or I don't want that, uh, that creature to be able to, uh, you know, swing at me. Tap it down before their combat. That kind of thing as well. Uh, keep in mind that your commander is vigilant, so you can still swing. Though you might not want to send your commander to danger too often because it only has two toughness. That being said, you can still swing and also tap things down too with this. So yeah, it's a very, very good card. Because again, this is basically just like, hey, tap your commander, draw a card, gain one life. Next up. Obviously, crew and now mount can be considered for this as well. I would personally 
be a bit safer when it comes to my resources that I'm utilizing for tapping my commander. And actually, vehicles are safer than mounts, in my opinion, because mounts are always creatures, from what I've seen so far. And crewing vehicles are just artifacts that can become creatures. So because of that, they can avoid sorcery-based, you know, creature board, board wipes, essentially. Like, a Wrath of God will never get a vehicle unless you literally turn your vehicle into a creature on that opponent's turn, which you probably shouldn't be doing unless you really need to use it as a blocker. So, Heart of Karen, a 4-4 vehicle that is low to the ground, just costs 2 mana, Flying Vigilance, Crew 3. So, again, your commander has 4 power, nice to be able to crew or again mount things. Uh, you could also remove Loyalty Counters from Planeswalkers to get this, but that's fine. But yeah, being able to just keep swinging with a 4-4 Vigilant Flying Creature each turn can actually put out a good amount of damage for you. Or again, in those times where you do need as a blocker, it's a pretty effective flying blocker as well. But again, be careful of that because then your opponent's like, oh, okay. Cool. Uh, second main phase, Wrath of God, goodbye to your tap effect. And being able to just make sure that you have a tap effect on the board for your commander can be crucial to make sure that your card draw value engine is there. So being a value engines, Aerial Surveyor. 3-4 flying vehicle for 3 mana. Whenever it attacks, if any player controls more lands than you, you may search life for a base lands, play battlefield tap, then shuffle. I mean, you are in green, so you have other ways to ramp too, most likely with lands, obviously. Uh, yeah, if you're playing against another player that is also in green, this could probably provide you a good amount of value. But yeah, making sure you're considering vehicles themselves that are a good amount of value, if that's the direction you're going to be going, is crucial. And again, obviously, ones that have a crew cost low enough, which... Four is pretty high for a crew cost anyways, but low enough that your commander can actually crew them. Moving on, Cultivator's Caravan, 5-5, five, five, vehicle, 4-3, mana, the crew 3, so you can crew it pretty easily with your commander. Also, tap one man, add one man of any color. So this is basically a mana rock for you, which is very nice that you can just utilize as a mana rock, and then also just a free way for your commander to tap. So make sure you're considering that. Next up, Healer's Headrest. You can also include some equipment in there as well. There's some equipment out there that allow you to tap your commander. Equipment for two. Equip creature gets plus zero, plus two, and has tap for the next one damage to be dealt to our creature player this turn. Pay white, white to attach it whenever you want, or pay one to equip it. So, a low equip cost is what I'd be considering for these. Again, you want repeatable tap effects. You want ones that are quite simple. It does not matter sometimes what the actual tap effect does. Yeah, if you can have ones that actually, you know, give you some value, great. Other than that, though, this is just, okay, it costs two to get in play. Only costs one to equip, and all of a sudden, I can just tap my commander whenever I want to. I'm going to prevent one damage to be dealt to a creature player. Doesn't matter. Does not matter what this actually does. It really doesn't. Sure, it, it saves you some life or whatever throughout the game. It does not matter. What matters is, hey, I can tap my commander to draw a card and gain a life. So yeah, that's quite nice. And also, plus zero, plus two can be nice too. Next up, Underwind Shaku. Again, another mana rock that can show up in a different way. Tap for a colorless. So it's not very effective when it comes to efficiency, but it is efficient because it says tap and untap legendary permanent you control untap it so though this costs three and taps for one it's basically cost three taps for well with this deck pretty much two because we're going to tap our commander with it tap it again for more mana and also again gain a life draw a card also secret of skybreak we got some creatures that can help us out as well this is a two one that can tap to untap target creatures so essentially again once we have that thing in play where we're like hey glare of subtool whatever it is tap my commander gain a life draw a card untap it with this tap it again gain a life draw a card being able to untap your commander quite a bit throughout the game can give you a lot of value. So again, this basically just becomes, essentially, any kind of these kinds of effects is like, hey, uh, gain a left draw card on them. That's all they are. Vitalize. Again, when you have those kinds of creatures, essentially, like that Sky Seeker of Skybreak, this becomes even better. Vitalize for a single green mana, untappable creature control. Obviously, this can also be like a combat trick for you as well. Like if an opponent's swinging out, you're like, ha ha ha, I won't get you. You're all tapped out. And you're like, one mana. Untap my army, block yours. No! Yeah, that, that can definitely help you out too. So being able to do that can be great, but also, yeah, once you have those kind of like tap effects in play, the more tap effects you have, you get more value out of them, including again, when your commander is ready to tap. Two arms are getting more of these that are great. Untappable creature control, draw a card. This one's actually a reprint, but it's finally budget friendly again. Already gives you that card advantage too on top of that, which is quite nice. Cacophonon, we'll talk about a card here in a little bit. Or actually, I don't know if I put that one in there. But basically, there are certain equipment out there that like basically turn your commander into a Timmy, into a Tim, into a Pinger. Uh, and that can really work well with this. A 2-5 Dinosaur for 4 mana whenever it's dealt damage, untapped target permanent. So obviously, like if this is a blocker for you and someone swings it with like a you know anything that has 4 less power, you're like, okay, I'll block, untap my commander, tap it again for value. That can be quite nice. But yeah, if you have one of those kind of like Timmy tap effects, like... I think I have it later on there, but basically, attach it to your commander, tap, ping this for one, draw a card, gain a life, untap your commander, tap again. You basically keep doing this, right, four times each turn because this has five toughness. I mean, if you give more toughness, even better. Or if you make it indestructible, 
I mean, that's just, um, what? Like, you can just infinitely do that then, right? Which is nice. Or draw your entire deck. Not infinitely. You're limited based on your deck size, but still. Yes, there's a lot of cool things that you can do. Some combos you can do with this. So you could build your deck around that as well. Next up, Serethi Viper's Fang. This can be a crucial card in a deck like this because it's amazing for protection. A 3-4 Human Warlock for 4 mana. Other tap creature control of Death Touch. So being able to give a creature's Death Touch is very nice uh, when they're swinging or, you know, just when they're tapped. Uh, other untapped creature control of Hexproof. That can be really, really good, obviously, because Hexroof is an amazing, amazing, amazing way to protect your creatures. And yeah, your commander is vigilant. And I guess you can still swing and just have, you know, Hexroof, which is lovely. But also, if you've got ways to untap it like this, pay one tap, untap it out your creature, land you control, untap your commander, tap it again, untap your commander. Make sure it has Hexproof when it needs it. Yeah, if you have these, like, extra, like, untap effects in play, you can ensure that your opponents are going to have a hard time deciding if they're ever going to target your commander. Because if they do, they might just get wiped on that because you're like, oh, I untap with this effect. Cool. That does not target now because of the Hexproof. Or it just fizzes, essentially. Fizzles. Next up. Trellisar Moon Dancer. On the other end of things, you can also, again, even though like the more value is from the card draw, you can take advantage of that life gain as well. A 2-2 Elf Cleric for 2 mana in Selesnia. Whenever you gain life, you get a counter on it. Then uh, scry 1. So basically, being able to get a counter on this, yeah, you can grow this into a big threat, essentially. But also, more importantly, scrying 1 a ton is a lot of, again, not card advantage, but amazing card selection. Setting up your next card draws can be absolutely huge with this. And again, every single time you have your commander, that's what's going to happen. Moving on. Well of Lost Dreams. Oh my goodness. Now your commander is essentially, hey, oh, when I become tapped, gain 1 life. Draw two cards by paying one mana. Artifact for four. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X or X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gain if you draw X cards. So yeah, again, you're gaining one life. You have to pay for it, but I would always pay. I mean, if you have the mana for it and you can. One life, or sorry, one mana for one card drawn is absurdly powerful. So yeah, tap my commander with like Glare of Sedul or whatever. Cool. Draw a card, gain a life, pay one mana, draw a card. Drawing two cards every single time your commander is tapped is crazy good. Trudge Garden, uh, also having to pay, but uh, also a pretty big effect. Enchantment for three mana. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two. If you do, create a 4-4 four, four, green fungus beast creature strong with trample. All of a sudden, you can make an army in absolutely no time once you're set up properly. Yeah, it costs some mana to do so, but two mana for a 4-4 four, four, trample. That's really, really good. So yeah, this commander, I think, has, again, a lot of potential with a lot of different avenues, you know, of play. But next up to one of the price your picks again cards outside of my budget but might be within yours first up paradise mantle and equipment for zero equip one equip creature has tap add one man of any color to your mana pool um yeah this is just again like i mentioned earlier there are certain times where you're like i'll just tap my commander with whatever this is again i'll crew this vehicle that i don't plan on attacking with it doesn't even matter whatever i just want my commander taps so you're not getting any value out of them or that other equipment i talked about earlier not really getting any value out of that who cares this is like, oh no, now you're turning your commander to a mana dork, and every single time you tap, you get mana. So being able to utilize something like this can be absolutely massive for you, where, again, instead of just getting the value out of your commander, which is already great, again, gain a life, draw a card, every single time it becomes tapped, you also are getting a mana out of this. You're also ramping, essentially, with your commander, too. Speaking of which, Earthcraft, $103. I think this is on the reserve list. Enchantment for two mana. Tap and untap artifact. Sorry, tap and untap creature you control. Untap target basic land. Play more basics, everyone. You shouldn't be like, well, what if I don't have a basic? You should have basics. Play basics. This is an amazing card. And being able to tap your commander again to gain a life draw card. Also, ramp. I mean, ramp, get mana. Like, basically, a, a mana dork type effect is huge. So keep that in mind. If you have $103, you know, lying around, great. Or if you want to proxy it, great. <laughs> Next up, Smuggler's Copter. Yeah, the Looter Scooter is a bit expensive when it comes to vehicles. Maybe one of the only expensive vehicles out there. 3-3 Flying Vehicle for 2 mana. Crew 1. So yeah, your commander can overcrew this, which is great. When attacks are blocked, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. A great looting effect. This is going to be able to get through, most likely, at least one of your puns, because, again, it has that flying. Yeah, but it just doesn't matter if it gets through. I guess it's just protecting it is what I'm saying with that. But being able to attack, draw a card, discard a card. That is huge. Being able to cycle through cards in your hand. Get rid of those dead cards and replace them with better cards. A Relic of Legends. An artifact for three. Tap at one of any color. Tap and untap ledger creature control at one of any color. Basically turns all your ledger creatures into mana dorks. Kind of like uh, we just talked about, goodness gracious, whatever that other mana rock was that I probably could scroll up to, but I'm not going to right now. <laughs> Honor one Shaku, is that what that is? Uh, yeah, being able to get extra mana of your commander, that is absolutely huge. Next up, Thorn Bite Staff. This is a card that, uh, is kind of like the one I was going to talk about. It's that one, it's, it's like a bow and arrow. I can't remember what it's called, but the, the Timmy Ping one. 
Never mind. Thornbite Staff, Shaman Equipment for two mana. Equip Creature has pay two tap. This creature goes one to our creature or player. And whenever a creature has been grave from the battlefield from play, untap this creature. Uh, shaman comes into play. You can attach it. Uh, our commander, unfortunately, is not a Shaman Human Ranger. That being said, well worth that equip cost of four because when this is on your commander now, all of a sudden, your commander just untaps every single time any creatures put in the grave from play. Obviously, if there's a creature with like one toughness out there, you can pay two, tap it, ping it down. That being said, just inherently throughout the game, creatures are going to get taken out. When they do, your commander untaps. You can then tap again, gain a life, draw a card from, you know, whatever, you know, glare of subdual kind of thing you have in play. So this equals when a creature dies, you are gaining one life and drawing a card. And that's an absurd amount of value to be had. So yeah, even though, again, it doesn't synergize with that shaman part or yeah, you have to pay for that pinging part if you want to do that, it's still an incredible card. Next up, Benefactor's Drought, basically another uh, two arms kind of, but weird. <laughs> Instant for two mana, untap all creatures until I turn. Whenever a creature can controls blocks, draw a card, draw a card. So yeah, you can actually draw two cards off of this too. And also untaps your bronze creatures. So it's a weird way to go about it, but still very good. Next up, Quest Renewal. Whenever a creature you control comes tap, you may put a quest counter on it. There are former quest counters on it. Untap all creatures you control during each of the players on tap stab. Wizards reprint this one. Goodness gracious. I don't think it's ever been reprinted. $7 right now. Um, Yeah, that's very, very, very good. Very easy for you to get to that point where you've tapped creatures, you know, four times, essentially. That can be through combat with other creatures, like your vehicle swinging through, not with your commander, obviously, but or activating your commander at least you know, four times, essentially. But yeah, once you get those quest counters on this, this is just like seed board muse for your creatures on your opponent's untapped step. So again, your commander, if you have a tap effect, you're getting your commander to be able to tap four times with each trip around the table, which is massive. Drum Bellower. Two on flyer, untap all creatures you control during each of those untap step. Pretty apparent why this is very, very, very good. Your creatures basically have pseudo vigilance, and again, any creature that you have with an activated ability with your like your commander, if you I, I say activated, it's not it's not activated, it's triggered, but it is basically activated when you can utilize again some kind of like a glare of subdual type effect where you're like tap my commander, then I get that trigger. So yes, basically an amazing way to do that. If you've got like Secret of Sunbreak too, that's also Skybreak. You can untap your commander again. So it's basically like draw again at least four and gain one life with each trip on the table or again if you have that extra untap effect like secret sky break it's like draw eight thousand your elixir you may activate you may play activate abilities of creatures you control as those abilities that haste that's nice already for other creatures that have active abilities pay one tap untap target creature so again yet another way to untap your commander seedborn muse yeah i already kind of mentioned it uh an absurdly good card for many reasons really really good when you have a reason to tap your creature especially your commander Untap all permanents you control during each of the players. Untap step. Yeah, get all your mana back each turn. Get all your creatures untapped each turn. Tap your commander again. My goodness, this is so good. There's a reason why it's so expensive, even though it's seen so much play in uh, so many prints, I should say. Virtue of Loyalty, a newer one. Uh, we can actually make a 2-2 Knight with Vigilance. Neat! Uh, but more importantly, the enchantment side of this, essentially, at the beginning of your end set, put a counter each creature control, untap those creatures. So, grow your creatures throughout the game, and also, yeah, untap them once. So you can utilize their abilities again. Archangel Thune. They summon similar way to grow our team, but even more so. A 3-4 Flying Angel that costs 5 mana that has so many combos, uh, but don't worry about that right now. What we worry about is whenever you gain life, put a counter on each creature you control. Yeah, that's really, really, really good. Even with a commander that's only gaining us 1 life each time, again, that doesn't matter with this because this is like a trigger. Like, if you gained 100 life, congratulations, that's still 1 counter. If you gained 1 life, congratulations, that's 1 counter. We are going to be activating our commander a lot, not activating, <laughs> activating other abilities with our commander, essentially, to gain life and draw cards. Every single time we do that, again, gaining that one life, you get a counter on every single one of your creatures. Then you don't tap your commander with something, you do it again. Another counter. You can grow your armor to be quite massive. I mean, turn your commander easily into a three-shot, two-shot, and even one-shot KO maybe at some point with this in play. Yeah, some crazy things can definitely happen. Uh, Roaming Throne. I already kind of talked about this one earlier in the episode. I find this card to be a little obnoxious, uh, to, if I'm going to be honest, because, again, the way that Wizards went about making it and just saying, like, oh, it applies to everything. Ha 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 ha. Eh. 4-4 four, four, Golem for 4 that has Ward 2 because everything has Ward 2. This definitely did not need protection, Wizards. Ender's Battlefield, who's a creature type. Uh, it is the chosen type to other types. If a triggered ability of another creature you control, the chosen ability triggers. Triggers little time. I mean, maybe you'll have another human in the deck that has a triggered ability, essentially. Or maybe a couple other humans. Who knows? Probably not Rangers. Maybe you will. I don't know. All that matters is that your commander does have a triggered ability, and it is triggered again. It's not activated because, like, you're activating other abilities most likely with your commander, but you are triggering its own ability when you're doing that. So, yeah, this just doubles it up, which means that every single time your commander taps, you are drawing two, gaining two. Crazy good. 
And again, if you have any other things, I mean, I'm trying to look through really quick. I don't think I brought up any other humans or any other, you know, rangers, uh, but with triggered abilities. Oh, there you go. Nope, nope, that's an elf. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I have any other ones on this list, but still, it does not matter. Even if you literally just have your commander as the only thing that benefits from this, it's going to be well worth it because, yeah, that's incredibly powerful. Uh, Roaming Throne is a obnoxious card. Uh, and it's just going to keep going up in price. Uh, kind of like the new card that I just talked about at the beginning of this episode. Regardless, a very good card for this commander too. But now this episode is coming to a close. Let me know your thoughts are on these spoilers. Let me know your thoughts on this brand new commander, Wiley Duke. I think, again, I do like when they have a different direction to take a commander in certain colors. And this one is, hey, play around with tapping your commander. You can do it in a couple different ways. You can go, obviously, mounts if you really want to. If that's, you know, the new set things, essentially, you can do that way. Uh, do you want to go with vehicles? You can go with that. Do you want to go with other types of type of effects, like, you know, equipment that do that? Do you want to go with, like, glares of Duel type effects, which are hilarious for, for you? Uh, and then also other ways to gain value from that. Gain value from the life gain. You go a lot of different directions with this kind of commander, and I really like that it opens that up. So if you are into this commander, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. Also, though, I'd love to hear from you, especially on your thoughts on any joins up in Goldvein Hydra. I personally just don't like when they have these kinds of designs that are just, in my opinion, not lazy, but it's like they know they're like, hmm, what's popular in Commander? Well, Commanders with triggered abilities. Oh, okay. Let's just start making 80 million ways to double that up. Not 80 million. We're, we're like three at this point, but still, it's just like, ugh. When you start making cards that, again, are incredibly hard to argue against ever utilize, ever not utilizing in your deck, except for budget. Except for budget, it's hard to argue against using Roaming Throne in a deck with a commander that can double up its triggered ability. Same thing with Annie Joins Up. It's more limited because it's in Naya, and obviously not every single commander has access to Naya colors, essentially, right? But still, it's kind of obnoxious when they start to make these cards that are like auto-include type territory. And it's pretty obvious what they're doing. And then also when it comes to treasures, again, treasures are pretty obnoxious these days. And we've had so many ways to use and abuse treasures. At first, it was like, finally, they've solved other colors not having enough mana resources to compete against green. And then it was like, oh, gosh, Doxide Sorceress. Oh, gosh, this. Oh, gosh, this. All these things. Corvold. Uh, but yeah, now we have, oh, green just gets a massive treasure spell with this, essentially. Again, not that they've already, they've already had a lot of other mass treasure spells, like whatever, um, the one where your lands can tap make treasures. They've had the, the dragon that, hey, whenever you hit someone, you're getting treasures based off of all the damage that you dealt. You get all these different ways to make treasures. It's like, goodness gracious, treasures are pretty broken. You slowed it down a little bit with this one, at least that you're starting to do like tap treasure tokens. It's a little late. It's a little late. You jumped the shark a while back. It's a little late. So that's just my opinion. I guess I should have. I just asked what your opinion was, and I just gave my opinion again, so it's my fault. <laughs> but let me know what your opinion on this is. Am I way off base? Are you like, no, treasures are fine. Doubling up triggers is fine. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, stay tuned to the channel for more exciting quick takes and spoilers. And thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.